into James chapter 22 route. So here we go. The very next day, I let Ryan know what I found. Hmm. So there's five supers in, the, in those archives who can turn invisible, he repeats what I said. Technically, there's way more. However, these five can not only turn themselves invisible, but other objects as well, including their clothes. Ryan looks over the folders I picked out and placed on the hmm. coffee table. We don't know that the guy who attacked you is one of them, though. He crosses his arms and leans back onto, into the couch. True, I admit, they may very well have nothing to do with the guy that attacked me, but it's worth a shot to find out. Don't you think? Some of them have a addresses. We can hmm. go and... You're not going anywhere, Ryan interrupts me. I fix him with a glare, my eyebrows lowering. Just because I got hit last time doesn't mean it'll happen again. Huh. No, it's too dangerous. I don't trust it. How do you fight a guy you can't even see? Look, I'm getting some self-defense training from James and Eok. With that, put your mind at ease. <laughs> right, just laughs at the audacity. You think a few tricks can help you go up against a super? A super involved with Huli of all organizations. He shake his head in disagreement. You're mad. I'm not letting you go again. Kane and I can figure things out ourselves. Hey, if you're not letting me investigate, I forbid you to go out on your own as well. Who says I'm going out in the field? I've got my drone, you know. Ah, uh, yes, it was very useful. Oh, very helpful in the last uh, in the rain last time I grumbled. Don't insult my drone, he snaps. Whatever, I'm just not going to stay locked up again. I did that on another planet and I'm done waiting around, I say proudly. I know it's dangerous, that's why I'm taking some lessons to be able to protect myself better. But one way or another, I'm going to find out who that guy is and why he was the last person our parents had contact with. Where he throws his hands up in the air. Do what you want, but not until after I see with my own eyes you can protect yourself. Until then, just sit back and let me let me and Kane deal with it. I bite down my bottom lip and look away. Fine, fair enough. It seems I'm going to have to shape up a bit before I can investigate further. Ooh, I've never heard this music before. A few days later, going through some rigorous training from jeans, we were at it again early in the morning. I slide my hand up across my shoulder, stretching my neck. My muscles feel so stiff and sore. Shouldn't I get? Shouldn't I be getting used to this by now? Uh -huh. Sore shoulders, says he. Asks you can absurd tone. Mm, I confirm. Throwing out all those punches just makes my arms super tired. Uh -huh. Well, that's because you're a beginner. Keep at it, and it'll be easier. He cheers me on. I give him a smile. Thanks. Let's hope. Mm. Alright, show me the moves. Eok restrain, restrain her from behind. James assert, inserts himself into our light conversation, using a tone that means he's not in the mood for chit chat. Eok grabs me from behind, a chokehold position that I've repeated many times by now. To be fair, I am getting used to the routine, it's easier to grasp. I punch backwards and deliver my full combo on Eok before he releases me. James remains quiet, however, his arms folded across his chest. He's been watching me like a hawk these past few days, correcting even the most minor posture mistakes. It's a little unnerving to be examined so closely. At times, I feel like I'm performing worse when he's watching. I get nervous. Now from the front, Dodge's attempt, he instructs us. Eok stands in front of me and I spread my feet apart with my hands in front of my face ready to disengage. Eok tries to grab my wrist, but I quickly defle deflect it with my own. He keeps repeating it, getting closer and closer to me uh. each time. Remember to step back, James tells me, noticing I'm getting I'm letting Eok get too close. Always maintain a proper distance between you and your attacker. I jump back to put some distance between us, except Eok is also let on his feet and he lunges forward, successfully grabbing my wrist and pulling me close. I just never notice how long his fucking nails are. You see Yoke's nails? Imagine him scratching your face. Oh my god. <laughs> I push my palm up against his chin, delivering a swift blow. I then knee him on the groin as he leaves himself wide open. With a guffaw, a guffaw. Yoke bought backs away, a pain expression on his face. Oh no, did I hurt you? I ask, fussing over him. I try to keep it light. No, 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 it was a good shot, he says with a grimace. Through a grimace. All I can do is give him an apologetic look. <laughs> Time to switch partners, James announces, stepping forward to himself. It's clear Eok is holding back, but so are you. Your attacks are restrained. You need to hit like you mean it. I wince a little. He's right. I have been holding back. It's hard to want to punch Eok for real. Maybe I wouldn't have such reservations against James' smug face. Eok, resume your own training. I'll take it from here. Oh shit, we're just, just training with uh, James now. Eok bows and leaves the two of us alone. Let's see how you fare against someone more competent, he says, as he unfolds his arms. That doesn't sound ominous at all. Uh, well, he's not gonna go easy on us at all. Come at me, I roar, getting into a fighting stance. James throws back his head with a smirk. Have it your way. 
In an instant, he's in front of me, grabbing my wrist before I can react. He twists me around and pins my arm behind my back. I struggle to break free, but he has an enormous amount of strength forcing me into submission. He lowers his face next to my head. You're dead, he says. James releases me, taking a step back. You're small. Use it to your advantage. Make yourself a target that is hard to catch. Move, dodge, and duck. Then he spreads his feet apart, getting ready once more. Again, he announces. When he approaches me again, I sidestep him, ducking away from his grab. Except he's faster than I am. He throws an arm around my neck, pulling me into his chest. I step on his, onto his foot, but he pulls it back, making me slam my heel into the ground. Frustrated, I try to groin attack, but he hugs me so close to his body, I'm going to even move my arm. Dead again. There's a hint of amusement in his tone. It makes me want to smack him. <laughs> There's no fucking way we can beat this man. James lets me loose and I, and I have an annoyance. Your priority is not to get grabbed in the first place, he lectures me. Because no matter the moves you know, some, someone stronger than you will always have the upper hand. Let's test that theory out then, I warn him, narrowing my eyes at him. He makes his move approaching me with, velo with velocity. I end up evading him, skirting around the field, staying late on my feet. But James is just as, just so much faster than I am able to keep up with, and within a split second he's behind me again, one arm wrapped around my neck and the other holding my left arm. When I try to punch backwards, James does the same thing as before, pulling me in closer so I can't hit him. Frustrated, I conjure a thread from all fingers, weaving them together to make a cohesive piece of rope. With this rope, I hook it around his arms that restrain, that's, restrain, that's restraining my neck, and I ink on it. Surprised by the sudden pull on his arm, James holds weakens, allowing me to wiggle to freedom. I jump away, grabbing the piece of woven rope with me. A smirk creeps onto my face, feeling quite proud of myself for escaping him. That's not what we taught you, he says, looking at the white rope in my hand. I dissolve and shrug at him. You said I can't be someone more powerful than me, but I don't need to be stronger than them, just smarter. It's clever, I'll give you that, he admits. Perhaps it would be better to train you while keeping in mind you can, he points at my hand. Make this, I say, making a single thread grow from the tip of my index finger. Yes, I was under the impression it only served medical purposes, but I've been wrong about that. You can apply it in combat as well. He steps closer to me, suddenly very interested in my ability. How strong is it? A little giddy he's showing interest, I show him how strong my thread is by spreading it between both hands and snapping it apart. It's not that strong, just a good tug and it snaps. But if I weave it together like this, I say as I conjure multiple threads from my fingertips, then it becomes much stronger, like a piece of rope. I lace together a string of around a meter long, then attach it from my fingers, handing it over to James. He gives it a close inspection, tugging at it to gauge the strength. He also weighs it as he moves his hands up and down. It's like, wait, he notes. Then he pulls it apart in two pieces without much effort, giving it one last glance and hands it back to me. Maybe strong enough to hold your own weight. You know, that's how I caught you, I say as I dissolve the rope. Caught me, James repeats, eyebrows raised. All right, you probably don't remember. The first time I saw you, you were falling from the sky. I weaved a net between two poles to catch you. I gestured with my hand to show him the scale of the net I had to make. I was so afraid I wouldn't be fast enough, but luckily I caught you without injuring you. I said with a triumphant smile. Now hold on, guys, gotta reply to a uh, important text real quick. He slowly tilts his head to the side as he takes this information, and this is completely new to him. It seems I owed you my life even before everything, he mumbles quietly, eyes cast on the dirt in front of him. Yeah, well, you ended up being the bad guy here and kidnapping me. That's why thanks for helping you, I say. Facetiously? James clicks his tongue, lessons learned, haven't we? Don't empathize with the enemy. I didn't know whose side you were on, I argue back. But even so, I thought that, I told you that night, I can't stand by doing nothing when I have the power to help someone. I look at him, a flash of determination flickering in my eyes. Even knowing who you are and what would happen to me, I'd do it all over again, too. James suddenly closes the gap between us and he's right in front of me. His gaze is just as intense as his posture. I have wronged you so much, yet you still look at me with your unyielding eyes, like a fire that can't be put out. Something inside me wavers, like I'm being entranced by him. Are you falling in love? Because I know I'm not. <laughs> mm. You have integrity, standing by your beliefs. I respect that, he says in a low whisper. We stare at each other for a while, it's weird and even a little exciting. He all but told me he respects me, coming from James that feels huge. My heart can't stop beating faster, and suddenly I don't know how to move my body anymore. Weren't we supposed to be training? How do we end up in this conversation? After a few more seconds, James retreats, stepping away from me and creating some space between us. It feels like I can breathe normally again. Now let's resume training. Try and use that ability of yours if you can. I nod at him and I get into a fighting stance. Alright, I'm ready. Flash a genuine smile on James' face stops me dead in my tracks. I'm going to have to get used to your nodding, he says in a light manner. I'm absolutely floored to see you, Max, so 
carefree. I've only seen him smile once at the Mako Festival towards his sister, but never directed at me. That's a smile? Is this a smile? It looks like he's like making fun of me. Like taunting. God, it feels like an absolute rarity to see it. My lips won't to smile on my own. You're going to have to get used to a lot of things with me, I replied, matching his tone. James stopped smiling, his face back to his usual self as he launches himself towards me. Damn, we've been training like from dawn to dusk at this point. We've been at it for hours now. Hours? I can't, I can't even like... Do 30 minutes of exercise. <laughs> James is unbashedly strong and ridiculously flat. Ridiculously fast, not flat. But I'm improving. I'm starting to keep up with him, even using my thread to get me out of difficult situations. But now I'm just getting drained and tired. James hasn't even broken a sweat. I'm so salty about that. I'm drenched in my own sweat and I reek. I get out of my finding stance. James, can we quit now, I whine? Except that was the wrong move. James was already running towards me. With my unguarded body, his attempt to grab me ends up, ends up knocking me off of my feet. I open claw his chest, trying to catch myself. It's not use. I fall down into the dirt with him on top of me. The force of James pushes so big. It makes us tumble across the dirt, rolling around until we come to a stop. Rolling around? Oh man, now I'm even. I'm stinky and super dirty. With elbows planted on the side of my head. Elbow, gaze, uh, elbow, elbow gazes, what? James gazes down at me. Pure fear reflecting it. Reflect, reflected, I cannot read and it's a brand new day. Reflected in his eyes. God, his entire body is crushing me. He's so heavy. Excuse me, sir. Before I die from uh, unable to breathe, can you take your hot bod off of my body? <laughs> it's so strange as his heartbeat. His heart is being fast. The melody is almost erratic. My breathing is out of whack, uh -huh. too. Are you hurt? He asked, scanning my body for any injuries. This music always reminds me of Dimitri. Because it's so, like, goofy and silly sounding. I blink up at him as I realize what he means. The oath. He can't harm humans. No worries. Your heart's still beating. I pan. Ugh. Future mother's nutsack. I don't like that word you use. Words. I didn't think you'd suddenly drop your guard. Sorry, I remember. Ugh. We could have both died. Uh, died? That's a little over dramatic. I feel so guilty, but also completely terrified that he's right. We could have died if he had hurt me. I don't think he would have hurt me that bad. <laughs> Jesus raised himself from me and swiftly pulls me to my feet as well. It's then that I notice a small scrape on my elbow. Uh huh. I did get hurt, I say, showing James a small scrape. James' eyes flicker between my elbow and his own hand. We are not dead, he states. I'm definitely glad we're not. We're still breathing, he observes. Mm. Standing too. The oath we took, is it not working, he questions. I have no idea either. Is it faulty? I stare at the back of my right hand and see the faint lines of the oath. I don't think so. Then why are we alive? I think, and I'm making a huge assumption here. Maybe there's a distinction between intent and an accident. Clearly, you didn't mean to hurt me. It was an accident. <laughs> James crosses his arms, looking a bit mm. peeved. Training is over. Let's return and replenish ourselves, he says stiffly. I'm all in a light, uh, not alignment, in agreement with that. <laughs> I'll admit, it was nice to see him panic a little bit. <laughs> right, I spent the next few days investigating the addresses of the supers who can turn invisible. Uh, Another dead end, he says, throwing the folder onto the coffee table. What was it this time, I ask? Cancer, can't hide from that, I guess. Dead for two years. Okay, yes, being dead definitely gets you crossed off the list. We've gone through four of them so far. They've either moved out of the country, are dead, or just missing completely. There's only one left. But working with eight-year-old Data is not going to help us much, says Rai. Seems as Mr. Invisible is left, he's in the new town next over. He's in the next town over. At least it's not far, I say, browsing through the last oh. folder. That's going to have to wait. Kane is out, out on his, mich own, his own mission at the moment. Huh? Kane's gone. Yeah. I mean, he's a super after all. He's got to do missions every now and then and earn money. What if I go, I suggest? Or I fixes me with a strong disapproving glare. <laughs> you kidding me? Of course not. I've been receiving training, you know. <sighs> it's not. It's been like a week. Oh my god, you're one irritating little booger. You know that, I groan? <sighs> I'm thinking of your safety here. If Kane's not around to protect you, who will? James, I blurred out. Or I blinked several times at me, his head twitching. <laughs> He bursts out laughing. He kicks the table and punches the air. He then clicks his tongue and gives me his finger guns. <laughs> Good one, sis. 
I don't know why I said it, but now that his name has left my lips, I am starting to see that it could work. Bringing a beefy guy along with me as a bodyguard, surely that would scare anyone off. I mean, he doesn't need to physically hurt anyone, it's enough for him to appear threatening, I say. Ryu sits up straight, give me a funny huh? look. Wait, are you serious? He can be my backup, I explain. He's got really good sense, senses, you know. Uh. That lump of alien shit kidnapped you to another planet. Then try to attack Earth again, he cries out uh. loud. Why would you even trust them enough to help you? Do I? A month ago, when I returned back to Earth, I would say I trusted Eok. But I wouldn't have an answer for James. Except I think my feelings have started to change. Well, first of all, he's under oath, so he honestly has no choice but to listen to me, I say. And second of all, he's already been training me to get better at self-defense. It shows good faith. Rai shakes his head, rubbing his temples. You're mad. Bonkers. King was right about the Stockholm thing. I punch his shoulder, glaring at him. Don't joke about that. Look, he's big and bulky. He could get me out of trouble. If Kane isn't available, then he's our next best bet. It's not like we can hire a super of our own for protection. The Forrester company would know. Then we'd have them breathing down our necks, asking us questions. And we don't want them finding out our parents were actually vigilantes. I hate that you make a good point, he grumbles. Uh. But you're supposed to be laying low, he points out. At least with Kane, you were wearing a helmet so people couldn't see you. I know, super mall girl or whatever. Relax, I'm not training you anymore, Anna. I quickly start thinking of some designs I could use. I'll wear a disguise. You're going to make your own super suit, aren't you? Well, who else is going to do it? I give him the widest and cheekiest grin I can muster. That's right. <laughs> who else is going to do it? No one but me. Yoke looks at me with curious eyes as I run around the various boxes oh. of fabric. Wow, so you are going to be a soldier, he asks in wonder. I hold up a piece of white latex and laugh. No, not exactly. I'm just going to investigate a lead on that man who could turn invisible. And I'm going to make myself a super suit so that people won't recognize uh. me. I'm a little confused how wearing something flashier makes you stand out less, he says sheepishly. It'll work, trust me, I say with confidence. I just need James to work with me. I mutter as I bite down on my thumb. I haven't asked him uh. yet. What do you mean? What do you want of Prince James? To, um, act as my bodyguard. Yoke stands up straight and pounds his chest. If you are in need of protection, I am willing to serve you, he says with a respectful bow. Oh, he's so adorable. I smile at him. He's always so eager. I'm glad he got to stay on Earth with me. I'd miss him too much otherwise. Thank you so much for the offer, Yoke. He grins at me, thinking I'll agree to it. But I think James is a better fit. I know you're both competent when it comes to combat, but neither of you can attack anyone in the first place. It's about looking intimidating. Hey. Yoke's brows drop, droop. Oh. Yeah, sorry. You're very cute in your human form. Not exactly something that instills fear in people. Oh, that makes him look even more dejected. Uh. I'm useless then. <laughs> no, no, no. I say quickly, feeling guilty. You're here for moral support. My bedroom door suddenly burst uh. open. What is this I hear about looking intimidating? James demands to know. What is up with that hearing of yours? I question loudly. Also, can't you knock first? Did this man knock after fucking coming in first and then knocking? Jane gives me a long glance and casually knocks on the door whilst keeping eye contact with me. <laughs> Very funny, I mm. quip. I am not acting funny, he replies, deadpan. You knock before you come in, sir. He <laughs> snorts in response. Whatever, I want to ask you something. Huh? Well, do you want to act as my bodyguard for a little while? I ask, suddenly feeling stupid for asking. He looks so cute when he's confused. What the fuck? He's so cute. You, I feel like you guys will know when I'm starting to fall for someone when I constantly call them cute. <laughs> he tells us how to this like a strange huh? look. Bodyguard, he repeats. Yes, I'm going to the place where a super lives who can turn invisible to see if it's the same one that attacked me. I think I could use a little backup. Huh. You're asking me, a prince, to protect you? Yes, please. He crosses his arms, eyes narrowing. Huh. What makes you think I'll say yes to that ridiculous request? Because... You wanna help me? I say innocently. Seeing his natural expression, I sigh. You don't need to do much. Just stand there and look menacing, that's all. Huh? This is the same man that attacked you before, he inquires. Well, that's what I'm trying to find out and why I'm asking for your help. Mm. Prince James, you can't let her go alone without protection, he huh. chimes in. Going alone will be a mistake agreed, then I shall accompany you. I pause, quite surprised he'd agree to it so fast. I would have thought he needed some more convincing. Maybe even begging, who knows. I didn't quite expect his readiness to help me out. Okay, thank you. Uh. 
It hasn't been too long since you've started your training, but I believe you should be able to defend yourself much better now. I will go to oversee, he explains. <laughs> Prince James is not honest. He's just worried you'll get hurt again, he whispers to me. James narrows his eyes at him. Yuk, be quiet or I'll throw you into the lake. Yuk shrinks and backs away. Y you wouldn't. You know go can't swim, he says in a fearful tone. He smirks at him. Exactly. Can you stop threatening Yuk, please? I ask with a loud huh? sigh. When do I? When do we leave? James asks, his tone serious. I look around my room. As soon as I finish my suit, I have to wear something so people don't recognize me when I go uh. out. How many days? He asks more urgently. I'll have it ready in two days, I say quickly. Mm. Then we should prepare. Let's head off the train. Now? I whine. I was about to work on my suit. I had all these designs in my head, ready to go. <laughs> if you want my help, you're going to have to work for it, he says. A cocky smirk gracing his features. When the fuck am I building my suit, then? Uh. Prince James is right. You should train as much as you can before facing the visible man again, he agrees. Alright, alright, I'll train again, but please leave me some time to finish my own work, I plead. Uh. Manage to beat me, and you can wrap up training early, he says. I groan. That means I'll be training all day. Huh. Get to it then. James then disappears from my room. Well, goddammit. <laughs> I pull the tab all the way up to the zipper, completely fit it into my own suit. I stretch out my arms and do a few squats to test out the fit. Huh? The hell is that? Asks her eye as he enters the living room. This, I say, flaunting my body, is my super suit. Uh. You look like a squatting white frog. <laughs> I grow up my brother. My design is very sophisticated. Thank you very much. <laughs> sophisticated? Yeah, you're right. I take it back. You look like a PlayStation, Player Station 5 instead. I'm still trying to get one of those bitches. <laughs> I want to play the Harry Potter game. There's so many games coming out for the PlayStation 5 that I actually genuinely want to play. And now that means I actually have to go out and fight the war of getting a PlayStation 5. <laughs> I shove right onto the couch with a huff. Don't be an annoying little pest. I'm about to head off, you know. His playful demeanor huh. changes. You're officially a vigilante now. You know that, right? So are mom and dad. Aww. And look how that turned out for them. I give him a cold look. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. <sighs> right, he has a sigh, then tosses me a small metal uh. can. Here, he says as I catch it. Spray the dude if you come across him. It's blue paint. How would that help, I question. He could turn matter invisible inside for yeah. himself. I rolls his eyes. Yes, exactly. Which means you're going to see a man-shaped hole in the middle of all this blue floating paint. Easy to find, no? Oh, I feel a bit slow. That definitely works. Man, girl, you didn't know that? Hmm. Now where's that meathead? I need to have a word with him before you leave, says Rai, looking around for James. He's outside, probably doing a bit of training before we leave. I stuff the can into a pocket I've strapped to my waist, but we both leave the cabin and go outside. At least it isn't raining this time around. I suspected James is training off in the distance, right near the pier. Yoko appears to be his sparring partner. James! I holler at him, waving my hand. They halt their training and walk towards us. James is already in his care. <laughs> now you two are matching idiots, remarks Rai. Knock him over the head. <laughs> I knock him over the head, giving him a disapproving huh. stare. Hey! He protests. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. You can shove that opinion up your... Oh... Are we moving out? James cuts in. I stop arguing on the right and nod at him. Yes, are you ready? Uh. To find an invisible man without being able to use my own powers, he fires back. You don't need your powers. Can't you sniff him out? You always manage to know when I'm bleeding. Rice nostrils flare up. Uh. Bleeding? Did you hurt my sister? He yells at James. No, I quickly cut in. Not that kind of bleeding. <laughs> Never mind. Let's go, okay? Uh. Good luck, Michiko. May you, may you return safely, says Iyo, because he bows in front of me. Rai suddenly pokes his finger into James' chest. Look, you better bring my sister back in one piece, alive and well. If I notice she is so much as a scratch on her, I'm going to toss you into a pool of piranhas and piss on your remains. Whoa, well, Rai. Pissing on the remains was a little too much. Everything else, that's fine. <laughs> James keeps his cool, probably because he has no idea what piranhas even are. Enough with the death threats. Don't pee on anyone, Rai. That's gross. Just follow us with the drone. I start guiding James towards the car. See you later, I wave at them. So we have matching outfits. <laughs> With the location enter into the GPS, we're on our way to Gion, the next town next to Cleaner. It's a little strange to be driving a car with James in the passenger seat next to me. We're both wearing super suits as well. Make sure you put your mask on when we leave the car, I warn him. I had to make him a small mask to cover most of his face. I don't want Forrest or Ink realizing James has left the premises. Rai is already hacking their tracking on James in the first place, but if his face gets captured by the security camera, there's not much he can do. Uh. 
Feels a bit unnecessary, comments. They can't know you've left. Same for me. We're both not supposed to be out right now, I say as I turn to turn a left. Jane's body lurches to the side of the car and he shakes his head, trying to keep himself balanced. He coughs and sits up straight. Strange. Figures you're like this as well on your own planet, he mentions. Like what? He takes in a deep breath, not listening to authority. I snort in response. Guess not. I enter a roundabout and Jane clutches the car door, his face looking pained. I don't think he like car rides. I think you need to slow it down a little. Actually, last time he was in a car, he was on edge as well. It was just as notice not it was just not as noticeable because I had Eok with me who kept talking to me about things he was seeing. Hey James, I call his name as we exit the roundabout. What is it? He asks, unpained. Are you nauseous? He stares out the window though he's unable to hide the paleness in his eyes. No, he answers. There's no need to concern yourself. Standard James talk. I bet he's car sick. I try to drive slowly and avoid roundabouts when I can. After a while, the sounds James speaks up. What are piranhas? <laughs> He questions. I stifle a giggle. I knew it was bothering him that he didn't know what right meant. They're, they're fishes with sharp teeth that could bite you. We finally arrived at our destination. Before exiting the car, I pull up my own mask over my nose. Are you ready? Uh, so not are you ready. Are you sure you're okay? I ask, concerned about James. He seems to be wobbling a bit on his feet. Even breaking out into a sweat, the car ride was not easy on him. Fresh air is good, he says, inhaling loudly. Mask on, I tell him. Thankfully, he listens as he pulls it over his face. God, we look like we're up to no good. Which I guess is correct? There, This is where he lives, in apartment 55. We're supposed to anyway, I say with a shrug. I check out the front door and read the list of residential names, looking for Alexander Kodov, his real name. Oh, he's here, I say excitedly, spawning his name on number name on number 55. Why are you acting like you didn't think he'd be here, James questioned me. Because he could've moved. The data I got on him is pretty old. I'm glad he's still living here, though. I stare at the door. What do I do? Do I just ring the door? Ring the bell? I look up at the apartment. Number 55 is on the top floor, it seems. If I ring and he recognizes me, he's going to run. I can't have him buzz me in. I need to break in myself. Right, can you check apartment 55? See if you can have, if you can look through the window and find anyone inside. I stand in my earpiece. The drone that's been following us rises up in the sky, circling the apartment building. It hovers at the top floor. See anything, I ask. Mostly closed curtains, right, mumbles. Maybe I can get a better view on the other side. The drone flies away to somewhere I can't see. I see. I saw someone move inside. Great, he's uh, there. Be careful. Let the meat sh shield enter through the door first. I roll my eyes at his nickname for James, and I turn to James. Okay, my brother confirms someone is to be at home. Now, how to open this door, I mumble as I pace up and down. As I'm pacing there, contemplating on how to unlock the electric door in front of me, wondering if perhaps I could scale the building and enter from the balcony, James nudges me. What? I say, fluster my, my, he, fluster he broke my train of thought. James holds the door open to me, cocking his head to the side. I look around and see an old woman walking away, presumably she just exiting, she just exited the building. I cut the door open for us as a nice gesture. Oh, well that was easy, I say, feeling a bit sheepish of making it more complicated than it needed to be. No scaling buildings then. Kane would have too much fun with that and call me Spider Widow or something. We enter the building. Such a nice woman. She probably thinks like we're just supers try to get home or something. As I stand around the apartment number 55, I suddenly begin to get cold feet. We don't know for sure this is the same guy that attacked me, but it makes me pause nonetheless. Huh. Remember your training. As long as you're prepared, you do fine, Jim reassures me. Yes, he's right. Invisibility does not mean invincibility. He's just a normie who can turn invisible, which means I have a chance. I knock on the door, gulping as my knuckles hit the wood. I wait for a response, keeping my eyes trained on the window for any movement in case he decides to bail. Two people with super suits showing up is bound to make anyone back off. When there's no response, I look over at James. Chico, he's on the balcony. He's trying to use the fire escape, right? He yells in my ear. He's escaping through the back, I tell James. Then I look at the door. Can you... Wasting no time, James kicks kicks the door in. The sound of shattered wood fills my ears, and it makes it takes us takes me a second to readjust. James has already entered inside without me, and I answer, I scramble to hurry up pop, hurry up after him. I make my way through the messy apartment, reaching the balcony. He's turned invisible. James explodes, following the sound of footsteps hurt back hurrying down the fire escape. I quickly pull the can of paint from a pouch and start to spray in the air. Blue paint particles start floating around everywhere, covering the fire escape. As soon as particles start to disappear, as they stick to the invisible super. A man-shaped hole can be seen through the paint. Two floors below us. There. James jumps down several flights of stairs to catch up to the guy. I quickly leave a rope together with my thread, using it to catch him. Shit, where do I aim? It's still hard to see through all this floating paint. James takes the initiative and grabs a piece of rope dangling from above and swiftly uses it to lasso it around the invisible man, tying it around him and restraining him. Oh, good job! I scream for joy. James caught him. With pure brute strength, James flops something invisible over his shoulder and launches himself up in the air. 
For a brief moment, I believe he's flying, but no, he lands on the balcony with a loud thud. He just has a lot of mus muscle power and those thighs of his. He had, he's like a certified grasshopper at this point. I apprehended the suspect, he says coolly. I can see his arm holding something with my thread being bound around it as well. Let me go, you bastard, groans the visible man. Let's put him inside, I say quickly. We already made too much noise. People might call other another super to investigate. We quickly head inside despite the protests of the guy we captured. Ew. Ew, man, what the hell is this? Yeah, clean up. What, is this bread? Hey, is that Plink? Do you, have you guys watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Oh my god, I want to rewatch Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I have to ask Tyler if we can watch it together. <laughs> if you guys know, that looks like Plank. But I'm sure it's not Plank, obviously. It's a brown trash bag or something. The front door has hastily propped back up. Through the, though the locks and hinges are completely busted, it's enough to block any noise from exiting. Because this guy won't shut the hell up. Let me go, you treacherous thieves. I'll spit on your graves. There's an invisible person tied up on a simple chair, with James and I standing in front of him. Show yourself a demand. A wad of spit materializes from thin air and flies my way. I quickly jump to the side to dodge it. Ew, gross. I have all day, you know. I used to catch you, trying to ignore the spit directed to me. <laughs> Or at me. Good for you, he replies sarcastically. Now let me go. This man is disrespecting you. We should gag him so he can't talk, says James. No, that's okay for now. Maybe later, I huh? answer. Are you talking some kind of code? The visible man questions. We're not going to do anything at all. Not until you show yourself first, I repeat. Mm. Fuck you. He spits at me again. This time it lands on my shoes. Suddenly, a scuffle breaks out and, uh, breaks out and the chair has been toppled over, hovering above the floor as James holds it up by pulling on the thread and that's tied around the man's waist. Wow, he's fast. Uh. If I did not have this oath keeping me in check, rest assured this man will be dead, says James in a low voice. Oh. Dead? For disrespecting me? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, my heart! <laughs> I know he's threatening to kill another human being, but it's nice to know he got angry on my behalf. Um. What's he saying? Asked the man. Fear clearly heard in his voice. He wants to throw you off the rooftop, I lie. I fold my arms and lazy look at my nails. Unless you show yourself, of course. <laughs> Bite me, bitch. Oh my god. Okay, let's take him outside. James lifts up, lifts him in the <gasps> chair up. No, 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 he shrieks. Put me down. Then show yourself. <gasps> You're actually cute. Why do you have to be cute? Get the fuck out of here. You're quite young. Who are you? You're Mr. Invisible? I thought in my head. Mr. Invisible was going to be like an old man. <laughs> and there it is. A man covered in blue paint suddenly appears in the chair. His blue eyes staring frighteningly at James, who's still holding him above the floor. James puts him down and steps back. All right, are you ready to talk civilly now, I ask? <laughs> who, the, who the fuck are you people? What do you want? Can you keep your voice down? I can't vouch for your safety otherwise. I don't really control this guy, I say, pointing at James. That seems to do the trick and he suddenly closes his mouth glaring at me. Alright, my first question is, are you the guy that told me to meet you at the warehouse? The widening of his eyes says everything. Gotcha, Mr. <laughs> Invisible. You're her, he says, realizing who I am. That's right. I don't take too kindly to being hit in the stomach, you know. Suddenly he spits at my feet again. <laughs> Fucking deserved it, if you are who you, who, who you say you are. <sighs> this man is acting insolent towards you. I suggest we really... Do throw him off the rooftop, says James. Mr. Invisible whips his head towards huh? James. The hell kind of language is that? No, that will be necessary. Uh -huh. right. Tell me what you're doing here in my house. How the hell did you find me here? He demands to no. know. I thought you could tell me, I answer. I want to know who you are and why you were the last person my parents had called. Mm. Smoker and portation. They're trash. They left me to die, he hisses. Those two names mean nothing to me, but my instinct tells me they were my parents' vigilante aliases. What do you mean they left you to die? I uh. You think I like living in this shithole of an apartment? Getting overrun by supers like you. Being Julio's lapdog. Eight years they left me to hang out and try. He hang out and try, he growls loudly. That means he's definitely involved with Julio, but why is he mad about my parents? <laughs> Where were they when I needed them the most, huh? I Did you not hear what I said? They fucking died. I would, I, would, I would slap the shit out of this guy. <laughs> I pause, slightly taken aback. You don't know. Uh. Know what? He spits back. They're dead. They died in a fire eight years ago. A fire claimed by Julio, I explain. The man slowly closes his mouth, momentarily not talking. Then he rapidly blinks his eyes, shaking his head. <laughs> no, they can't. That's not true. They're my parents. I saw the bodies. They're dead. I mean, state. 
Why do you think I'm here? I finally figured out a lead on their deaths. You were the last person they called. You even sent them a text message saying, so you, text message you were on your way. On your way to what? Huh? Me? He says, sounding surprised. He stares at me with his blue eyes and ears signs settling between yeah. us. You don't know anything, do you? He asks. That's what I'm trying to find out. All I know is that my parents had your information, including your address. Huh. Of course they did. I gave them all that information, he scoffs. Irritation flashes in his eyes. They never told me about having a daughter. They never told me they were meddling with supers either, I retort back. Uh. Meddling? They were supposed to get me out. Get you out of what exactly? <laughs> Fuck it, you don't know anything. I'm not saying shit. For all I know, you're some kind of Julio spy. God knows how many they have. This guy is extremely frustrating to work with. He's being incredibly difficult. Mm. If he doesn't want to answer any questions, I can tell you some interrogation methods Jim offers. I shake my head. I really don't want to torture him, I say exasperately. Ah. Torture? He eyes his eyes wide as an alarm. See this guy over here? He's very eager to get his hands on you to get you to talk. I casualize that point to head James. A bit of good cop and bad cop co acting wouldn't hurt. So if you don't start cooperating with us, I may let him do his thing. Hmm. That works too, says James in his own language. Uh. I don't know what you want from me. I haven't seen smoker or portation in, t in years. When I got the call from their number, I didn't know what the hell to do. All I want to know is why you were calling them eight years ago, I repeat my <laughs> question. I gave them the information they asked for, okay? And then they were supposed to get me out. Instead, I waited around like a fool, thinking I could start over. He spits out an annoyance. Sharing information that they asked for. What kind of information did they ask for, I inquire. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not saying anything! James says forward and, kick forward and kicks, a, kicks at the chair's leg, breaking it down in one swift motion. The chair falls to its side and with the man still tied to it. Looking threatening, James pulls, his back foot, pulls back his foot, getting ready to kick again, this time aiming at the man's knees. Seeing his line of sight, the man starts ah. to panic. Fine, I'll tell you! Just leave my kneecaps alone! James lowers his foot onto the floor with a smirk. He's, get he's good at getting him to talk for sure, since he doesn't know James can't harm him in the first place. I help him sit up straight, though it's a bit hard with one of the chair legs missing. Now, what was this information you told them? I ask, looking him right in the huh. eye. That one of their friends was a backstabber. The biggest backstabber you can think of. Monumental shit, apparently. Can you stop being so vague? Just tell me already. I say impatiently. Which friend backstabbed them? <sighs> I don't know his name, they call him the boss, I just know what he looks like. They don't let me know what that kind of information, okay? I'm just a low grunt they use if they need some spy work done, he explains. You are a spy for my parents, I asked, raising my eyebrows. Mm. Informant, he hisses, correcting me. Well listen, you said spy, so I just mimicked. The pieces of the puzzle start to fall into place. My parents were using this guy as an informant. They were a spy for Julio, but we're feeding my parents information about them, is that right? <laughs> Look, it's not by choice, all right? He has annoyed. Uh, you tried getting out of being blackmailed for something you did when you were stupid and 17. And kind of horny. Whoa! They just keep making you do more fucked up stuff until you're in deep and can't leave. I, You did not need to add the, the other info. <laughs> I narrow my eyes at the kind of horny part. What do you... What do you do that they're blackmailing you for, I question. <sighs> Does it matter at this point? I've done worse since then, he sighs. Yes, of course. His blue eyes shift to the side, debating whether or not to tell uh. me. Then he hangs his head low. I spied on some woman changing, okay? My ability is quite useful for that. Jail. Right now. Jail. Right now. <laughs> he said he's done worse than that now, so jail right the fuck now. My face scrunches up. Gross. He was leering at women while invisible. That's so gross, you pervert. I chastise uh. him. They somehow got proof and made me their lackey. I ended up having to do more fucked up shit until there was no way out. He l l laments, lament, whatever fuck, dejected me. Uh -huh. Smoker and Portation were going to get me out. A new identity, a new life. Portation was going to set up a portal so I could leave this shithole. But the portal never appeared. They abandoned me after they got their juicy information. I'm quite surprised to hear talk about a portal. One of my parents had an ability named Portation. Like I said, they didn't abandon you. They're dead, I repeat. Getting a little annoyed he's not accepting it. It seems on the night they were supposed to get you out, they ended up trapped in a building on fire and perished. The man casts his eyes out to the floor. Do you know who did it, I ask. He looks at huh? me weirdly. Isn't it obvious? I tilt my head to the side, clearly still in the huh? dark. I found out who was at the top, running all this shit. I showed them a picture I managed to take while he was having lunch. It was one of their friends. I can f Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Okay. Your dad. I can feel a chill settle my stomach. Which friend? Yeah. How should I know? I still don't know the boss's name. Just that he looks like an older version of that super you brought along last time. Before his hair went all lightning-y. He means Kane. Because they both have red hair or something. 
Kane's parents died in the same fire as well. If I show you a picture, can you tell me if it's the same guy? If I shot my cell phone? Sure, whatever. Even if you know what he looks like, the guy is not, the guy is not impossible to catch. He practically won't leave his precious hideout unless he's armed with his flock of supers. And he's always retaining bases as well. One of the top guys at Julio hires supers. <laughs> Duh. Well, you think, well, well, you think they got to be so powerful because they were all normies? They blackmail us to do their bidding. That definitely makes sense. Julio is a powerful organization that still terrorizes supers and people alike. They think they're using supers to do the job. Ugh, it makes me sick. I browsed through the pictures on my phone, opening up the one that, uh, opening up the one I took of Kane's dad out on the terrace. The one that was encrypted. At the time, I thought the identity of the man hidden in the shadows was important, not the one in plain sight. I turned the phone over and show it to the man. Do you recognize him? Ugh. How'd you get that picture? That's the one I took, he says. Eyebrows furling together in a frown. I feel my heart stop. This this is the picture you sent to my parents eight, eight years ago. Mm. Yeah, that's Julio's leader. Having lunch with another super. Portation won't approve, so he put me on a stakeout. Julio's leader. I echo mindlessly. Are you sure? Huh. 100%, he says with an air of confidence it's hard to ignore. No way, I can't believe it. But he died in that fire as well, I point out. And went to the funeral. There was nothing left of him but ashes. Huh. He's very much alive. Saw him in a meeting with the other top supers a couple of days ago. Shit's going down, that's for sure. So, whose ashes were those? I quickly pocket myself and look away. All this information is making my head huh? spin. Ichigo, did I hear that right? Kane's dad is alive. Ryan's voice echoes in my ear. Yeah, and apparently he's the top boss of Julio, I answered through, the grit, through gritted teeth. This can't be real. It's already so much of taking that my parents were involved as vigilantes and were tracking Julio. But to hear that the man I've known as Kane's dad all this time, he's part of Julio. Did did he kill my parents, I choke out. Hmm. Probably. He was obsessed with capturing them, you know? But I don't think he knew Smoker's importation's true identity. I rub my temples, feeling emotionally uh. exhausted. Hey, are you going to untie me anytime soon or what? I'm spilling out of my spilling out my guts here, he whines. I feel like I need some time to process this. It's too much. Mm. My suggestion is to bring him with you and return to, you, to your sibling, says James, after being quiet all this time. I'm not taking hostages, I respond. Mr. Invisible looks alarmed at this. I need to know, how long have you been playing informant for them, I ask. <laughs> He groans, as if I keep track. A year, maybe. Just let me go already. I answered enough. Or everything. Where is this boss now? I continue to uh. go. I don't know. Look, he's, he changes where he's hiding frequently. We never meet at the same place twice. Damn it. If Kane's dad, Benjamin, is alive, then I want to know where he mm. is. That's all I know. Just untie me already. Fuck. Yops. Keep your phone on, I tell him. We'll be in touch. <laughs> the hell you are. Get out of my apartment. I turn to James. Come on, we're leaving. Uh. Hey, untie me first. Mm. He, he has answered all their questions. I saw him bend down to touch the thread wrapped around his body and dissolve it. He immediately spreads uh. his arms. Finally, he rejoices. Uh. I would have left him tied up, James comments. I sigh not replying to that. It wouldn't feel right to leave him like uh. that. Hey, who's going to pay for my door, huh? You think that shit comes free? Mr. Invisible asks, narrowing his eyes at us. I start walking away, James following closely. I'm sure your landlord will fix it. I say before exiting the apartment. My grip on the wheel tightens, so I try to reorganize my own thoughts. Huh? This Julio, who are they? It was mentioned a lot. James looks at me with a quizzical gaze. He must have been pretty lost with all this talk about Julio and whatnot. It's a terrorist organization. They want to eradicate all people with abilities like me, I explained, see it's still seething on the inside. They were the ones that started the fire that my parents died and I finished. But now, I don't really know what to believe. What exactly happened that day? Kane was with us when he got a distress call from his mom. She said she was in the building along with my parents and it was on fire. She called Benjamin's name, but the call disconnected before she could finish speaking her sentence. We rushed to the office, but when we arrived, it was too late. The building was completely engulfed in fire. The autopsy later on confirmed that the four bodies they, they recovered were indeed my parents as well as Kane's. Kane's parents died in that fire too, but now I'm hearing from this guy that Kane's dad didn't. He's alive and Julio's boss. I'm so confused I said with a heavy mm. sigh. He could also be lying. It's best not to trust him completely, James points out. Yes, you're right. We have no way of confirming whether or not he was speaking the truth. I focus my attention on the rope, making sure to drive slowly so it doesn't upset James. Hey. I start softly. We had a pretty good team back there, I say, slightly smiling. 
James was supposed to be my imposing bodyguard, but instead I got someone who actively pursued Mr. Invisible. He even helped interrogate him. James folds his arms around his chest with a smirk. <laughs> Perhaps you've forgotten I am a very skilled captain, trained in the art of aerial and close combat. No, I certainly haven't, I say, waving my hand at him. But I admit, I didn't expect him to be so com competent without being able to use his abilities. Uh. Nevertheless, we were in a tandem with each other. Good synergy is hard to come by in mids. You didn't use pure strength, but your tricks and wit were an asset. I guess I'm the brains and you're the brawn, I joke. Uh. Excuse me? <laughs> he questions raising an eyebrow. Uh, nothing, just an expression. It means you use strength and I use my smarts. Hmm. <laughs> It's still better to be strong, he says stubbornly. I suppress a chuckle. Still, it makes me happy to see him admit I did a good job. I hope Bright thinks so too. However, I've got more important things to think about. Like how I'm going to tell Kane his dad is actually alive and he's kind of the leader of the terrorist organization. And how I'm going to bring them down. <sighs> I feel like the closer we get near the ending, the longer the videos will be. So prepare yourselves, and I must prepare my throat because <laughs> it went dry towards like the last two minutes here. So not a lot of romance going on in James' route. Um, it's more like story intense more than romance intense, which is kind of sad because you know I want romance. Just I want a half and half good mix, but right now it's more like eighty and twenty. But uh, we have either two more chapters to go, or five. 23, 24, 25, 26. Yeah, because it's either 25 chapters or 27 chapters. I'm pretty sure it's 27. Imagine it not even being 27 and it's actually 29. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.